Family, what's good? It's your boy, and yes, we're back with another video. Okay. Um, to my first time viewers, I like to say welcome, suits and scents. On this channel, we talk about, of course, fragrances. Uh, we we talk everything dealing with fragrances. Okay, that's what we talk about. So, of course, I want you to subscribe, but. Before you do that, go back, check out some of the previous videos from Suits and Sense. See how it hits you. You know, see if it's entertaining to you, if it's informative, or if you just plain, you know, like the channel. Then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I consider you my family. I hope you consider me your family. Okay? To my returning uh, subscribers, my returning viewers, much love, family. Much, much, much love, and I truly appreciate you. I truly appreciate you. I truly do. All right, we got an um, unboxing today of Roja Dove's uh, new fragrance, okay? All right, that's what we're going to do, okay? All right, fam, today we have a unboxing of Roja Dove's new fragrance, Taif Aoud. Okay, Tai Fao came out in came out this year, 2023. Just came out. Um, at the time of this video, uh, Neiman's Saks, none of them. I think they're releasing it on Friday, and today is Wednesday, I believe. So I was fortunate enough to get a box. Okay, now retail price. Uh, I think at the time when it's going to be sold, it's going to be around $765, $765. If you can find that cheaper somewhere else, hey, get it. I, if you can, let me know. But, you know, I don't know. All right? So, um, we're not going to waste any time with this. We're going to go ahead and crack this open, dive into it. With the notes, they're so so complex, and with this particular uh, fragrance, it is the rose because the rose comes from Saudi Arabia. Um, better yet, it comes it's from the mountainous region of Taif. You know, it's a city in Saudi Arabia. Um, and it's said to be, in, 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 like I said, in the mountains region, and it's said to be uh, uh, one of their main attractions as far as when tourists come. You know, everybody has to go see these uh, these rose fields, basically. And that's what this uh, main note is that's in here. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's see what this presentation is like. Okay, now. Roja always does, I mean, to me, I believe Roja always does the presentation superb, okay? So, let's see here. Oh, that's not bad with the black velvet and the fragrance. That's, that's nice. That's really nice. Okay? There it is, okay? Like I say, it's going to run you in the mid to high sevens. It is. If it's worth it, that I don't know. We're about to find out, okay? So let's just go ahead. Oh, look at the love the cap. You gotta love Roja's caps. You do. Oh, Taif. Oh, all right. Let's let's spray this and let's see what we get. Okay. Now what? Oh, I get the rose right in the opening. Mm. Okay. It's it's. It's not uh, it's not beast mode like Amber Oud or the Agalee or anything like that. The rose is real soft and sweet, but but the fragrance isn't soft. I, I'm I'm getting some musk. Uh, get the rose, get the oud. All right, let's let's talk. Let's, the the rose seemed to be the main accord in here because of the location where it was taken from. So I did a little research. Let's let's talk about this rose in here a little bit. Um, it's a red pink rose of the damask species, all right? 
named after the city of Taif in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Of course, okay, that's where the road comes where the rose comes from. Okay. Um and it's been said that the rose has a hint of tea and honey when it's in full bloom. Of tea and honey when it's in full bloom. I can't say if that's true or not because I've never been to Saudi Arabia, let alone Mecca, to or the rose fields to have uh, seen the, uh, the uh, rose, let alone sniffed them. I'm going to put a picture of the uh, rose uh, field up here where these roses uh, were uh, uh, picked from. Okay. And now this is, I find really interesting why, you know, like I mentioned, the price is $765, right? Maybe this has a part to do with it. It says it takes between 10,000 to 15,000 flower heads to produce a single vial of essential oil. To make one vial of essential oil takes between 10 to 15,000 flower heads. You know that's a hefty, hefty price tag. A hefty price tag. Has to be. That's crazy. Also, uh, Javinci and Gorland, they have also used the rose from uh, Saudi Arabia, the Taif rose. Yep. Okay, this drying down a little bit. It's drying down a little bit. I'm getting, I'm getting rose and oud. Those are the notes that I'm getting. Those are the notes that I'm getting. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, in the opening, you got a tad bit of citrus with some bergamot, and then you had the, the aldehydes in there. But the bergamot, you get it slightly. When I say slightly, I mean very slightly. Because when I first sprayed it opening, all I got was rose. That was it. I got that rose, and it was abundant. Not not uh, not like a floral type sweet, but a, a rose in, in its purest form to me. That's what I got. Nothing added to it. Just a pure rose, like right from the petal. That's what I got. Um, and now... <sighs> And now I'm picking up a little, uh, getting a little bit more floral notes because it has Lang Lang, got some geranium in there, some jasmine, but that's in there slightly. Like I say, the rose is dominant. This type of rose is real dominant in this fragrance. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this like maybe 30 minutes or so. And then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna give a dry down on what this is really like. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. But in the opening, got a little bit of citrus with the bergamot. Of course, then you got the uh, the, how, the aldehydes. A um, little bit more florals with the geranium. I get the geranium, the jasmine. You get it's some lang lang in there, uh, but. The rose overpowers all of that. The rose is overpowering all of that. Okay. So like I say, uh, just do a quick recap on this. It's going to run you about $7.65. And I believe that's based on just that rose alone. Because it says it takes 10 to 15,000 um, flower heads to make one vial of the oil that produces the uh, scent for it. Okay. Um, come from Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's a pink rose, um, and this is what uh, Mecca, the city of Tarif, is known for, this Taif rose. That's the only thing that they're known for, okay? All right, we're going to let this dry down, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to uh, give some closing thoughts on this. So, all right, be right back. Alright fam, on the dry down it says it has vanilla in there. I'm not getting no type of vanilla at all. It also says it has patchouli. If patchouli is in there, I'm not getting it. I'm getting rose and oud. A little bit of benzoin, tad bit, a little bit, but with this dry down I'm getting, um, it also says it has labdomen. Now. The oud, 
it's overpowering everything on the dry down. Not to where it's um, a, a a stinky oud, barnyard, nothing like that. No, because the rose and the, the rose and the oud make a nice combination together. Uh, you get a little bit of musk, a little bit of musk. It, it's it went from to my nose in the opening. It went like quick citrus was in there, real quick. The rose came in, kicked the citrus out the back door. The rose stayed. Now I'm getting the uh, the musk and the oud. But the rose is still in there. So they both sitting in the living room on the couch just chilling. And that, that's what the house is. That's what the house is. It's that rose and that oud. Little bit of musk. I, I don't get no vanilla. No vanilla. And it's been like 45 minutes now. And I let this uh, sit and it still smell as strong as it did when I first sprayed it. So that tells me that the longevity is going to be quite well. And plus with me, I'm an oversprayer, so it's going to last anyhow. For the normal sprayer, I would give this maybe six hours of good uh, longevity. Uh, the projection, the projection will be good. Maybe about three hours, you'll get a good strong projection. Then it'll start to die down and it'll be more close to skin and uh, close proximity. But that first three hours, oh yeah, you're going to light the room up. You're going to light the room up with that first three hours. So overall about this scent, it says gender neutral in the opening year. But to me on the dry down, it tends to lean more masculine with that oud because the oud is really prominent in here. And the rose becomes more of a dominant rose instead of a soft, sweet rose. Become, out of the type rose, I guess it's just a completely different scent. Uh, it's, I, I would think it was going to be more powdery, but it's not. Not at all. Then again, it could be the musk that's adding that that's extra masculinity to it. Because in the dry, it says it has musk, vanilla, benzoin, and uh, agarwood. Um... The vanilla, I'm not getting at all. I get no sweetness. No sweetness at all. It says it's in there, but I don't get it. In the dry, I don't get it. I get the musk a little bit. Of course, the agarwood. Of course, the rose. Uh, <sighs> Labdamum coming in there slightly, but you got to really, really smell for me. It's in there slightly because the oud is so prominent. The oud and the rose is so prominent in this. So overall, I would say this is a this is a really good um, I would say it's a good grown grown man scent. Good sexy man scent. Um, as far as the season, on a hot day, this is going to really kick. It's going to really kick with that oud. Not in a bad way. Uh, like for me, by me being an overspray on a really, really hot day, I wouldn't overspray with this. I wouldn't. I would, I would give normal sprays because hot day, this thing is that oud and that rose is going to really project. Now, if you want to be nuclear and light the room up and set off some, some, some bombs up in there, and not in a bad way, not in a bad way, not in a bad way, okay? You're just going to overtake the room with it. You truly will. Then that's what you'll wear. Pretty good scent. I give it a, a eight out of ten. I would. I give it an eight out of ten. Longevity, like I say, uh, for the first three hours, the uh, projection is going to be monster. It's going to be beautiful. After three hours, three to four hours, then it's going to be you know more close to the skin, close proximity, and then after that, um, you know probably just basic average as far as projection. Longevity, I give it six hours. You might be able to get seven, depending on how much you spray. With me, I'm an overspray, so it's going to last on me all day. Cold weather, this is gonna be on point. This is gonna be on point. Okay? Like I said, it's uh the rose and oud, the rose is the Taif rose based out of Saudi Arabia. Um, and I showed you the picture of the uh fit the rose fields that they have. That's a, that's a lot of roses. That's a lot of roses. So I don't know if that's part of their main income. But Saudi Arabia got plenty of oil, so I don't think that the roses will help. It just adds to the uh, income of the uh in your country, so I, that, that's that's my take on it. But I was still amazed. It takes ten to fifteen thousand flower heads to make a single vial of that uh, of the uh, oil. Wow, 
Maybe that's why a lot of houses don't use that typo because it takes that much. So it has to be pretty, pretty price tag on it. And for it to be a pretty price tag to purchase that road, that's why you charge $767 for a fragrance. You know? Decant. <clears throat> All right, family. That's my take on this. Um, like I say, $765. It just came out this year, 2023. The dominant notes in here to me are the rose, the oud, and on the dry down, you got the musk with a little bit of lavender. In the opening, you got that citrus uh, slightly. Uh, and in the base, you know, you got some geranium, some lang, -lang and all that stuff. But that's in and out. That's not there that, that long. The main down the rose and ooh, that's what you get in here. And then rose. Oh, the scent is somewhat familiar to another fragrance, though. I, I can't put my I can't put my name my nose on it, but it's somewhat to another fragrance. But this one is is potent. It, it, uh, um, I mean, overall, it's, I, I, to me, it's a pretty good scent. I think it's a pretty good scent, you know? Is it a nosegasm scent? I will have to wear it for a couple days to see. I would have to truly give it a good wearing uh, for like a day or two in the high heat and, and cold weather, whatever, see what the projection is, see if it's a real nosegasm. But overall, pretty good scent. All right, All right family, until the next video, this is your boy, hey. To my first time subscribers, once again, uh, go back, check out some of the previous videos from Suits and Scents, see how it hits you, if it's entertaining to you, if it's appealing or informative, or if, it, if you just like it, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Support your boy. Like I said, I consider you my family. I hope you consider me your family. And to my family, my returning uh, subscribers, thank you. Much love, family, much love. Can't stop, won't stop. We're going to do this thing together, family. I'm going to bring you as much knowledge and information as I can on all areas concerning our fragrance. All areas. All right? Until the next video, family. Hey, we're not stopping. Okay? Until the next video. Deuces.